that has been my quest and my focus. Um, and I don't think I knew it when I started using uh, that other song, and I so wanted to use this song. I'm very happy to be using it now. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Um, I've had a very blessed week. Just blessed upon blessed upon blessed. Like, just have had more um, energy and happiness to pursue various and sundry things, starting with him and everything else flowing out of that. Um, man, which again and again, I continue to be impressed by. <laughs> I continue to be impressed by God's design. Oh, good stuff. Oh, good stuff, God. Um, I was being impressed by his natural design uh, this weekend, being out in the world and in the, in the, uh, in the natural world, in the, in the creations of his hands, and then also impressed with just the grand design that he stamps on our lives, you know, or that he stamped on my life in my pursuit of him. You know, in my pursuit of Christ, he has, man, he's just done such interesting, symmetrical, symmetrical and asymmetrical and surprise ending. And I don't know, it's just a, it's such a, a blissful narrative. And for me, the this wonderful crux of the latest portion of the narrative is this whole, like, placing Christ first, not just in, like, in my moral sense, in my sense of what is to, how to behave in right and wrong, but just in everything. And right now, for pursuing the, the joy of God, and the joy of God as it was reflected in Christ, and then, then how I'm to emulate that in ways, and and further have him be my joy. And it's so funny, because this week has just been filled with blessing and blessing and blessing, and just like, just prayers answered, and more prayers answered, and just, I've been playing with such joy, knowing he's there always, you know? And I should be playing with joy, doing with joy all things. And then this chapter comes up that I'm reading today, and it's all about suffering again. And I'm like, hmm, is this just meant to teach me perspective, or is it a sign of things to come? Now that I'm experienced joy and blessing, or even, in, even before that, trying to really chase it, but then getting blessing from it that, like, I'm eager for the challenge of suffering to my joy, that I might remain joyful in affliction. And the affliction, we're actually supposed to pursue affliction in some degree uh, by the dictates of God's word, um, but affliction for righteousness, not just affliction for affliction's sake, but Christ chose to suffer in order to save us. And we are caused, called to avoid, not avoid suffering in any way, uh, but rather First Thessalonians three four through five. That's what? What? That's what? Thessalonians. <laughs> what did I say? Thessalonians. Thessalonians three four through five. When we were with you, we kept telling you beforehand that we were to suffer affliction, just as it has come to pass, and just as you know. For this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to learn about your faith, for fear somehow the tempter had tempted you and our labor would be in vain. And that's the joy of pursuing Christ, too, I gotta tell you, for me, in suffering, is that... That's the reward part I'm trying not to fear, is that basically nothing then that I pursue in righteousness is in vain, whether I see the fruit of it or not. That to consecrate all to him is eminently right, you know? Eminently righteous and good. And that I can walk in no, uh, in no nebishy neuroses about, <laughs> about whether I'm doing right or wrong. That the singularity of focus on him and joying in him and being fulfilled in him, letting him fulfill me, for goodness sakes, really, uh, that singularity of focus really does clear the way, not only just to accomplish other things, but just simply to be, to be joyful in being, in being right and not having it all based in me and some sort of uh, elaborate logic of correctness that I have to defend or, or decide, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh... Hebrews 12, uh, verses 3 through 7 and 11. Consider Christ, who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. 
And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when re reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the ones he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. And that's a quote from Proverbs 3, 11 to 12. It is for discipline that you have to endure. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Now, I love that. And I know that as this joy continues to rise, to rise within me, as I get out of the way of it and just receive God's blessings, that I am being called more and more to do more and more. The more joy you have, the more energy you have, the more, the more you just want to share it. So I'm trying to share it more in these. You might have, anybody who watches these for a long time, you notice they're uh, a lot longer. Um, but I'm still praying for so much guidance into like, well, where shall I suffer for you, Lord? You know, because I feel like it's so funny as a child, not child, but whatever, a uh, younger person, I, um, I yearned for that sort of martyrdom aspect because it seemed so tough and manly and like, yeah. And then I'm, later on in life, I'm like, oh, well, it's, sometimes it's a lot more subtle than that. It's a, you know, it's a roll of the eyes or a, a blankness of stare or a, yeah, I just don't get that, you know? So it's funny, you suffer in all these, like, like measly ways <laughs> that just don't seem aggrandized. But any suffering at all for righteousness is, is gain. Bless me. Uh, is it not? I mean, in, in any situation that, that plays out as logic, let alone let alone in the eternal sense, you know, in chasing that ultimate reward of <laughs> of being remade in the image of godly perfection, of humility and grace and truth, too. You know what I mean? Truth and righteousness, too. Not just like, oh, it's all just beautiful for the sake of being beautiful. It's beautiful for the eternal purpose of praising the grand artist who made us, you know? The grand writer who, who wrote out all of our, of, our, uh, of our film, our screenplays. You know, the maker of heaven and earth. I don't know what could be cooler than that. That's actually pretty cool. And I wanted to read one last thing before I battle on out of here. Do, 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 do. So in that, we are, I'm called, and I'm called to do this more and more, and I'm praying more and more for more ways to do this and reasons to do this. Because you know what, sometimes I feel like I'm not suffering enough for Christ. I'm like, man, I can suffer more. Why has he made me so lucky, or am I just being fearful and a little quiet, too quiet too often? I don't know. We'll see soon. But Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And that comes also, in this whole thing I'm reading too, amongst the whole discussion of suffering. So my, my job is this joy that the Lord is cultivating, that I'm finally just getting out of the way of, is to, is to persevere in the face of other joy, huzzah, but also in the, in the face of suffering and anger, and yeah, you need to chill with that Jesus stuff. And then whoever whoever knows whatever type of suffering, but I'm to be a reflection of his grace in all moments, in all ways, in all things. And I'm joyful even for the opportunity. Selah, Selah.